All right, everybody, what's going on? Let's talk about what we're going to start with in our virtual chemistry. We're going to talk about gases, uh, factors that affect gases, the kinetic molecular theory referred to as KMT, and gas properties. This is all in Chapter 10. Most of it's in the very beginning of Chapter 10, so if you're checking out the textbook. We're going to go through the factors that affect gases in this video. There will be two more videos for KMT and gas properties that follow. There are four factors. <clears throat> Those factors are molar amount, volume, temperature, and pressure. Molar amount. We've already talked about this um, in stoichiometry. Uh, we talked about this when we covered molar masses earlier on when we did formulas, writing and naming, we calculated how heavy they would be. Um, we know that the mole is exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So if I have a mole of lithium, that means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd lithium atoms in that sample. Um, if I have a mole of aluminum, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum, and that would weigh 26.98 grams. If it's a compound like water, then we know we have one mole of water. It's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water, and that would take up... Um, about 18.02 grams because we have two hydrogens at 1.01 gram. We have one oxygen atom at 16 grams. Add that all together. 1.01 plus 1.01 plus 16. It gives you the 18.02. Um, <clears throat> volume. We know volume is the three dimensional space that a sample takes up in nature. Um, typically, we record that in liters or milliliters. Um, we can also record it in cubic lengths, like cubic centimeters or cubic meters. A useful relationship to remember as we get into the sections, especially the gas laws later on, um, is if we have a milliliter, it's the same amount as a cubic centimeter. They're interchangeable. Um, a liter is a thousand cubic centimeters then. Here are some formulas and uh, their corresponding three-dimensional shapes. And what you can see is the um, base, the length, and the height would all be measured in centimeters. So that's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters or centimeters cubed. Our radius, we would square that times the height in centimeters. That would give us centimeters cubed. Um, and then a normal box type, you have your length, width, and height centimeters, centimeters, and centimeters. Again, you'd have centimeters cubed. Um, temperature um, is something we talked about early on in the year. Um, it is the measure of the average kinetic energy, the, the energy of motion, uh, and that's calculated by doing one half m mass v velocity squared, one half mv squared, so there's two factors that affect that, the size of the atom and how fast it's moving. Um, temperature tells us what the average energy of all the particles in the whole sample is. So if the temperature goes up, the particles have more energy. They're moving more. They're moving faster. The scale we use is Celsius. Um, it's based on the freezing and boiling points of water. So zero Celsius is where water freezes, 100 Celsius is where water boils. And then everything in between is just a 1 one hundredth of that, that difference in temperature. Um, Kelvin is also referred to as absolute temperature. Um, it's based on an idea or a theory um, that at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, all motion would stop, including electrons moving, which means they would get sucked into the nucleus. And in essence, you would create little mini black holes everywhere. So that is theoretical. It hasn't been able to be reached yet. Um, we'll go into that a little bit more with Charles Law next week. The big thing I do need you to understand, though, 
is that a degree Celsius and an increase of one Kelvin is the same change in temperature. So if you go up one degree Celsius, you go up one degree Kelvin. And then to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you take your Celsius temperature plus 273, that's your Kelvin temperature. Um, you can do the opposite as well. You can take your Kelvin temperature minus 273, you go back to Celsius. Temperature. If we look up here, you have your Kelvin temperature and your Celsius temperature. So 300 Kelvin is 27 degrees Celsius. You do the math there, 27 plus 273 ends up with the 300. So again, to change your Celsius to your Kelvin, you're gonna add 273. To go from Kelvin back to Celsius, you're gonna subtract 273. What I want you to notice here is that we have these particles let's say they have a mass of about 20 units. Notice how their speed is moving. And then let's look at how many collisions occur. This will help us get an idea of how fast they're moving. In a 10 second period, there's 32 collisions between the container walls and the particles, okay? And that gives us a pressure of around, on average, six atmospheres. We'll talk about that next on the slideshow. So just keep that idea in mind for a second. Now, let's look what happens when we crank the heat up. We're going to add energy and we're going to go to, let's say, 480 or 207 degrees Celsius. Let's look and see how the collisions have changed. Notice we have more collisions, higher temperature with the same particles, higher temperature, same particles. They have to be moving faster. OK, now if we. Reset this. And we put in the smaller particles, this would be like helium around four units. First of all, notice how fast they're moving. And if we do the collision counter, we're at around 35 collisions, 30 collisions at 300 Kelvin with the big particles. We're going to be up around 80 collisions for the small particles. Notice we have the same pressure right around six units. Smaller particles have to move faster to have the same energy. Smaller particles have to make more collisions to have the same pressure. Now let's define pressure. Pressure is defined as the force over the unit of area that that force is being applied to. Gases create pressure within a container by 
colliding with the container walls. Pressure can go up if there are more collisions, more particles in the container. Uh, the particles in the container start moving faster because the temperature goes up. Um, or the pressure can go up if the particles collide with the container more violently because the particles are heavier or because they are moving faster. To understand pressure a little bit better, let's take a look at this simulation. We're going to start by pumping a unit of gas into this container. And I want you to look at something when I put the gas in. Notice the pressure doesn't start to change until they actually start to hit the container wall. Zero pressure. Now your collisions start and that is when the pressure goes up. So why did the pressure not register until the gas particles hit the container wall? What's pressure? Force over area. So these particles don't register a pressure until they exert a force on the container wall. Let's look at the number of collisions in a 10 second span when they're at 300 K. We have 43 collisions. Let's look at some ways we could make the pressure increase. First, we could increase the energy of the particle. So if the temperature goes up, let's take it up to 500 K. Okay, at 500 K, let's look again. We have 45 collisions, a little bit more collisions, but look at how the pressure went up. The pressure went up from around six to almost 10. Same number of particles, they're just moving faster. Faster moving particles hit the container wall more often. More collisions is more force, greater pressure. Now let's look at what happens if we add another unit of gas. What do you think is gonna happen? Think about the number of collisions that are gonna happen. Think about how many times the balls are going to hit against the wall. Do you see how the pressure jumped up? Our pressure went up. Let's see how our collisions increased. Went up to almost 90. The other thing we can do, if we think about looking at particles again, let's look at a different size particle. If we put the small particles in there, same number of particles, notice how much more often they're hitting the container wall. One pump of that, 50 particles. Let's add in one pump of the other bigger particles. Temperature's constant. Pressure went way up. Why? By adding the different gases, we increase the number of collisions. So when we're talking about pressure, you need to be able to visualize, kind of close your eyes and see this happening. The more gas we put in, the more pressure we create. Why? Because there's more particles hitting off the container wall. If we raise the temperature, we make them move faster, which makes the collisions happen more often. The pressure is going to go up. 